Hello and welcome back to the 10th episode on how to create your own programming language. So in this episode we are going to be adding another new type to the language and that will be the list type. So we are going to be able to create lists using square brackets so this will create an empty list and if we want to put some elements into the list then we can just put them in separated by commas. We are going to use the plus operator to add an element to the list so if we add 4 to this list that will give us 1, 2, 3 and 4. And I've decided why not use the multiply operation to concatenate two lists. So this will create a new list with 1, 2, 3, 3, 4 and 5. We'll be able to remove an element uh, from a list using the minus operator. So if we do minus 1, that will remove element at index 1 and that will leave us with 1 and 3. If we remove the 0th element, that will leave us with 2 and 3. And we can use negative numbers to remove an element from the end. So if we remove... Uh, element negative 1, that will remove the last element, leaving us with 1 and 2. And if we use negative 2, then that will remove the second last element, leaving us with 1 and 3. And finally, to get an element from an array, we're going to use the slash operator. So this array slash 0 uh, will give us the first element, which is 1. Uh, but if we do slash 1, that will give us the second element, which is 2. And if we use minus 1, that will give us the last element, which will be 3. So we'll start off as usual by updating the lecture and we need to add in a new uh, left square bracket and right square bracket token type. So if we open up basic.py and we come down to the tokens, uh, we're going to add in a new uh, left square bracket token type and then a right square bracket token type. And so now we'll come down to the lecture and create these tokens. So we can just copy and paste the code we have for the parentheses and we'll change these to left and right square brackets. And that's it for the lecture, so we'll move on to the parser next. So we'll have to update the grammar rules first of all, so we want to add in a new list expression. So we'll add this to the atom, and we'll define this down here, list expression. So a list will begin with a left square bracket and end with a right square bracket. And in between we want a list of comma separated expressions. So we can copy this part of the rule from our function call rule because we do the exact same thing here. So we'll just copy and paste that. So that's all the changes to the grammar rules we have to make, so now we can update um, the, the parser and we'll start by creating a new node type. So we will define a new list node class and we will create these in the parser in a minute. Uh, so this is going to take in uh, the element nodes of the list. So these could be number nodes or string nodes or whatever elements we have in the list. So we'll just assign that to self.element nodes. And if the element nodes list is empty, there's absolutely no way of getting the position start and position end from it. So what we're going to do, which I regret not doing for every other node type uh, since the start of this series, is actually just take in the position start and position end uh, in the constructor. So we can then just assign that to self.position start uh, and self.position end. So now we can come down to the parser and add in our new rules and create the list nodes. So I've scrolled down to the atom method of the parser and what we want to do now is look for a list um, expression. So we know it's going to be a list expression if we come across a left square bracket a token type. So we'll add in a check for a left square bracket. So elif token dot type is equal to token type left square. And then we'll call self dot list expression. We'll wrap that in result dot register and we'll just assign the result to list expression. So we'll check for errors as usual and then all we have to do is return result.success and pass in the list expression. So now we'll come down and create the list expression method. So define list expression. So we'll start as usual by creating a parse result for this method. And remember our list node needs to take in the list of element nodes, so we'll create an element nodes variable for that. And our list node needs to also take in the position start and position end. So for the position start, we'll get the current tokens position start, and we'll just make a copy of that. And now we can write the code for the grammar rules. So we'll start by looking for a left square bracket. So we'll check if the current token type is not equal to a left square bracket. And then we'll just return this error saying we expected a square bracket. And before I forget, we also need to add in the square bracket as part of an error message uh, for the atom rule, because we can now use square brackets. So assuming we came across this square bracket, we can now advance. And we'll check if we immediately come across a right square bracket after left square bracket. And that means we just have an empty list, so there's no values in it. If values are going to be added to the list, then there's a lot more code that needs to be executed. The good news is that we can just copy and paste this code from the call node method, because it does the exact same thing. So if we come over to the call node method, we can just copy all this code from this else statement. 
and we can paste that in the else statement of the list expression. We now want to change this to append the elements to the element node uh, list and we also have to do the same thing here. We now want to change this to say expected right square bracket instead of right parentheses and we also want to change this to a right square bracket as well. And we can change the error message here as well. So finally then at the end of this function we can return a new list node. So this just has to take in the element nodes, the position start, and for the position end we're just going to get self.currenttoken.position end and we'll also have to make a copy of that. So that's it for updating the parser rules, but we're going to have to update a few error messages in the parser as well. So in the atom rule we updated the error message to include the left square bracket and there are quite a few places that overwrite this error message so we also have to add the left square bracket to those places as well. So the first place which overwrites the atom error message is expression so if we come down here uh, we'll need to also include that in the expression error message. The comparison expression also overwrites this message so we need to add that here as well. The function call also overwrites this message, so we need to add that here as well. And finally, the list expression function which we just created also overwrites that error message, so we need to include that here. And that makes sense because we can have nested lists. So that's now it for the parser, so we can now move on to the interpreter. So for the interpreter, we're going to have to add in another new value to the language, and that will be a list value. So we'll come down here and create that. So we'll create the new list value and there's nothing really new here, it's the same as adding in any other value. So we'll start by taking in uh, the elements for the list and we'll assign that to self.elements. And don't forget to call super init as well. So at the start of the video I said we were going to use the add operator to add an element to the list so we need to overwrite the added to method. So the elements that we are adding can be of any type so there's no need to do a type check. And this is going to be an immutable operation, so we'll create a new list, which will be self.copy. And we'll have to create the copy method in a second. So all we have to do is take the elements of this new list and append other. We can then return new list, and we'll return none for the error. So that's it for the add to operation, and now we'll move on to the multiply operation, which will concatenate two lists. And I know multiply makes really no sense, but I've just decided we're going to do it like that. So we'll define multiply. And this will also take an other. And this time the other element has to be another list. So we'll check if other is a list. If not, we're going to have to return an illegal operation error. So this is also mutable, so we'll also create a copy of our list. And this is going to be almost the same thing as above, but uh, this time we're going to use the extend method rather than the append method. So what the extend method does in Python is just concatenates two lists together. So we can again just return new list and none for the error. So we also want the subtract operation for removing elements from a list. So this time we want the other type to be a number because that number will be the index of the element we are removing. So we again want to return an illegal operation if we don't come across a number and since this is also immutable we need to create another copy. And by the way we will be making mutable operations as well in the next video. So removing an element from a list by index has a chance of creating an error because uh, that element index might not exist. So we're just going to wrap our code in a try block and we're going to get the elements from our new list and we'll use the python pop method uh, to pop a certain index from the list and that will be other. And actually we need to get the value from other. So if this all goes well we can just return the new list and none for the error again. But if the element is out of bounds we need to return this error so it just says element at this index could not be removed from list because index is out of bounds. And now the final operator will be to get an element from the list and we are going to use the divided by operator to do this. Again it doesn't make much sense, but why not? So this is very similar to this method, so I'm just going to copy and paste it. So we need to get an element at a certain index, so we need a number type again. This time we are only retrieving the element, so we don't need to create a new list. And this time we want to return the element at index other dot value, and if that fails we can um, return the same error message. Uh, but we'll change it to element that this index could not be retrieved instead. So finally, like every other value, we also need to define a copy method. So we'll create copy equal to a new list, and we'll pass in self.elements for the elements, and we're just going to use this slice syntax in Python to create a shallow copy of the elements. 
we need to update the context and position of this new copy and then we can just return the copy. So now we can update the interpreter to work with this new list value. So we'll add in a new visit and list node method. So we'll start off by creating a new runtime result and we're going to need to create a list of elements which will be um, part of this list. So we'll go through every element node in node.element nodes and we want to visit each node and add it to the elements list. So we'll do elements.append and we'll wrap the following in result.register and now we can just visit the element node. So by visiting the element node we'll now get an element value which we can put in the element list and we'll pass in the context here as well. And we need to check for any errors every time we visit. But at the end we can just go ahead and return uh, a new list and we'll pass in the elements into this list and we need to set the context of this list and also the position. So the position uh, will be node.position start and node.position end. So that should be it for adding lists but we're going to do one more quick thing in this video and we're going to update the for expression and while expression to return lists when they are evaluated. So you will see an example of where this might be useful in a minute when we are finished. But uh, we'll scroll down first of all to the visit for node method and this will now return a list so we are also going to need to create an elements list to pass into our list type. So every time we evaluate an expression down here we will just append that value to the list of elements. So now we'll update this return and instead of returning none we now want to return a new list and we can pass in the elements, this is the same as before, so we need to set the context and the position of this list. So then finally we have the while node and we have to do the same thing here again. We need an elements list and every time we evaluate an expression we'll again add that expression to the elements list and we'll copy this here from above and we'll do the same thing as we did in that method. So I think that is it, so I'll just check and I'll be back in a second. So just a couple of mistakes and things I forgot. So in the multiplied by a method of add list class, uh, we extended the elements by other. We actually have to extend that by other dot elements. Also in the divided by method, uh, we're returning self dot elements other dot value. Uh, but after that, we need to return none for the error because there is no error. And then finally, I forgot to add in a representation method to this list. So we'll just uh, create one of these methods and we just want to return this string which shows a list using the uh, square bracket syntax and then we go through each element in the list, we convert it to a string and we separate it by commas. So that is it, so we can run the program now, so python3 shell.py. Okay, I will be back in a second. Okay, that should hopefully be fixed now. So we can now create an empty list by just putting in two brackets and we can fill the list with elements. We can add an element to a list by using the plus operator and we can concatenate two lists together using the multiply operator. Okay, sorry, that was just my alarm there. So we can concatenate two lists and we now get one, two, three, three, four, five. And finally, we can get an element from a list. So if we do slash zero, that will get the zero uh, element, which will be one. And if we look for an element that isn't in the list, it will give us an error. So our for and while loops now return lists. So I'm going to create a for loop for i equals one, two, nine. Then we want to just return, I'm just going to do 2 to the power of i. And as you can see, that now returns a list uh, with all the elements from 1 to 9, but 2 to the power of each element. So 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. So that's all working fine. So everyone, that is going to be it for this video. In the next video, we are going to add in a whole load of built-in functions, such as print, clear, a few mutable list operations, and some other functions. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and comment if you have any problems. And I will see you all in the next video.